name is Carlos Martinez and I'm a principal with Gensler in New York. I work on architecture, design and business strategy. We're at a moment in time when cities have to evolve quickly, almost instantaneously. How can we learn better from a mixed use environment like Hudson Yards? The great thing about kind of uh, mixed use uh, communities is that they create kind of an ecosystem that it informs itself. You know, one of the things that I love about sort of kind of mixing sort of a uh, residential and mixing retail within environments that are sort of where people work is that retail actually is a great example of how uh, things can shift very quickly because they pay a lot of attention to consumers. And I think being in an environment that is constantly sort of reflecting that, it's, it permeates to all the elements that make that community unique. I think Hudson Yards is a great example of how you sort of develop uh, new communities and how you sort of incubate very sustainable uh, kind of uh, systems that allow for people and for uh, kind of a, a community to sort of thrive. You know, mixed use is at the core of that. When it comes to culture and instituting new workplace rules, how will that affect the way we work together? As we talk to some of our clients uh, when they are, you know, asking us to help them with a back to work strategy, you know, one of the things that comes up is like, what do we need to do? You know, what, what, what should we do in, in light of the time frame that we have? And one of the things that we talked about is that there are certainly physical things that we need to look into and probably do and change or prepare the space for. But more important is the things that we need to do to really sort of help with the the, the, the change of behaviors that need to be sort of uh, given to people. Protocols and the way that we're going to sort of be using the environment are going to be as important because we're so eager to go back to work. And I think everybody's so committed for this to be a success that we want to know. We want to sort of like uh, understand and we want to communicate. So we are all pushing in the, in the right direction. When people return to work, they're going to have to go through a transition zone from one place to the next. And I know you've thought a lot about the opportunity for companies and buildings when it comes to public spaces and transition zones. Can you talk about that? Transition zones are interesting. So if we actually, and there are many dimensions of what that transition is, but if we sort of keep it very much into that physical space, let's say what happens the moment that you enter a building where your office is and you sort of need to get from that front door into the door of your own office, you know, I think that um, that space is one of the most under leveraged space in real estate. Airports are actually taking some of the really negative aspects of security and using transition space to actually make the experience very meaningful and very enjoyable for the travelers, while at the same time sort of advancing and creating better security protocols. So I actually feel that there are some really, really good opportunities that can happen in office buildings, especially with sort of advanced technologies and sort of intelligent spaces where we can make all that space work uh, uh, on behalf of the, of the people on the building for better, more safe environments in terms of how they work. One of the things that we do is we really pay attention to the friction factor of the floor in order to make the shoes cleaner. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there's a lot of other things that we can do within that transition. We can look into sort of touchless technologies. So as people move through the space, they have less touch points. And also we can do with a smart technologies and intelligent spaces, we can make the environment be much more uh, sensing. So we can actually create things that can help us understand better the level of healthiness of the individuals as, as well as the environment. Do you have any thoughts about flex working, productivity across different times, uh, hours of operation. It flex protocols about how people work is something that's been evolving now for some time. And again, I believe that this is going to be one of those moments where we can sort of accelerate and exponentially advance how that can work better for people. The workplace, I believe, is going to advance very rapidly because offices are going to be equipped to handle from the bandwidth perspective, from accessibility to points of contact, from connectivity, all these elements that make it so seamlessly are going to, they are going to ramp up in, into the uh, workplace itself. So we're finding a lot of information related to this idea of how sort of a, a hours of operation and shifts and how pe when people are working, companies are looking to attract the best talent in the world. And, uh, and that's key in order for to be successful and to thrive. And we are understanding that, again, going back to this idea of choice, that we need to provide all these choices to people. I think that we're going to be able to bring people together much more effectively um, 
and, and, and the other thing to keep in mind is that we're all driven by purpose, right? So at the end of the day, what companies are trying to do is really that what they do in the world matters. And in order for that to happen, you need to sort of have people that are committed to do that whenever they are available and whenever they sort of can align the li their own lifestyles. So I think this, this notion of aligning all these elements together and how we can work is going to be important for success for companies. Thank you.